Hi, I'm Dan Emodi, Chief Marketing Officer. Hi, I'm Amit Davidson, Hardware Manager. And today we're going to talk all about batteries. What makes them tick, drain or crack? Stay with us, it's going to be electrifying. Many of us can relate to the frustration of enjoying a long ride only to discover that our device had ran out of battery. No more music, conversation with co-riders or navigation guidance. People worldwide often wonder how do we calculate battery life figures and why charging your device is crucial even when it's not in use. What's the deal with this? How does it function? And what is talk time? Well, today we're going to delve into these questions and hopefully by the end of this video you'll clearly understand your Carter device and its battery. Lithium batteries are the heart of our devices and are an incredible piece of technology. And you won't find these type of batteries only in our products. They are also used in day-to-day -day electronics worldwide. Lithium-ion batteries don't have a set of expiration date and their lifespan depends on how you charge them, use them and store them. Over time though, battery life is expected to naturally decrease. Like all good things, these little power cells need some care. So, with that said, let's dive further into the topic of batteries and understand how they're built and how you can get the most out of yours. We will divide our battery discussion into three key topics. How we measure battery time and how your usage affects them. How lithium ion battery works and how to ensure your battery lasts as long as possible. Our packed-up battery packs 850 milliamps of power, but what is it good for? Well, like a water fountain, a battery has a fixed capacity. It's the way we use it that makes all the difference. Stand by. Music playing. DMC intercom. All of it combined. Eventually, depending on the way we use the communicator, our battery will run out. Each hour of DMC transmission consumes about 65 milliamps, all inclusive. Do the math and you'll see why we rate our 850 milliamp packed up battery at 13 hours talk time. We even tested it in the field just to be sure. Same way, playing music takes about 55 milliamps per hour, a phone conversation consumes 45 milliamps per hour, and merging music replay with DMC conversation consumes a combined 85 milliamps every hour. So far for the simple stuff. Now let's dive in. A lithium ion battery is the most popular means of powering modern day consumer electronic devices. From your phone, laptop, to this battery of PackTalk, to this heavy piece of an electric motorcycle. It's a wonderful piece of electrochemistry, but like anything in real life, it isn't perfect. Let's dive and see how it operates. So we've made a few shortcuts to make this video more digestible, but the principle remains the same. Thank you, Dan. Our battery is an electrochemical cell that contains an aluminum cathode covered in lithium ion compound on the plus side and a copper graphite anode on the negative side. In between, there is a thin plastic membrane separator dividing the battery volume into two parts. Both parts are filled with lots of lithium ions and electrolyte. When we charge the battery, lithium ions migrate through the membrane to the anode side, receive electrons directly from the charger and combine with the graphite. When the migration is complete, we get a full charge battery. When we use the battery, the opposite happens. The lithium atoms shed electrons, detach from the graphite and become lithium ions, moving on the cathode through the membranes in the middle. The lithium ions are depleted slowly and the battery is empty. Now, all of this works very nicely in theory, but as with all chemical reactions, life could be a little messy. If, for example, you overcharge the battery with substandard charger or use it under extreme temperature, the undoned starts to break down. Should you continue, over time the battery could short circuit. Now, if you happen to like fireworks or just love to watch things burn, well then, congratulations. On the other hand, if you drain the battery completely and leave it discharged for a long period of time, you damage the cathode, leading to an eventual short circuit and the unavoidable meltdown. Luckily, modern power cells are equipped with protection mechanisms to prevent this from happening. Nevertheless, better not to test them. If this wasn't clear enough by now, cycling your device isn't about riding your motorcycle. Under normal use, each charge and discharge cycle creates tiny microfractures in the chemical compound of the anode and cathode, locking in a bit of lithium and losing a fraction of the cell overall effectiveness. The more charges and discharges cycles a battery undergoes, the more capacity of said battery will go down. 
a normal lithium ion battery should be good for many hundreds, sometimes thousands of charge cycles. But as the saying goes, nothing lasts forever. You're right. On average, a lithium ion battery, like the one you find in your cardio unit, can experience a capacity reduction of about 20% after one year of typical usage. After a year, the degradation slows down. This percentage may vary depending on the usage pattern, environmental conditions, and other factors. Gradual reduction in battery capacity over time is a natural occurrence and does not signify any defect in the battery or the device. You can, however, slow down the deterioration pace considerably by following these easy to implement practices. First, avoid draining your battery completely. Deep, full charges stresses your power unit. Prefer more frequent, shallow discharges and charges. Reducing strain on the battery. Here at Cardo, we advise to charge your device when you get a battery low indication at about 20% charge. Next, don't store your unit for long periods without charging it periodically. Your battery naturally discharges over long periods of time, even when the unit itself is switched off. These leakage is common and expected. Don't leave your battery empty for long. If you do, you'll find its full capacity has diminished when you finally take it out of storage and charge it. As a rule, charge your communicator at least once a quarter. Lastly, Protect your charging efficiency by using genuine charges and cable made for your device and avoid cheap hardware from questionable sources. Temperature matters. While our units are tested to withstand a broad temperature spectrum, going beyond that will harm your unit and result in accelerated battery capacity loss. If you think, well, I'm not riding through the Sahara Desert, what does this have to do with me? Please know that leaving your unit in a car exposed to direct sunlight in the middle of a hot summer day can result in temperature exceeding 70 degrees centigrade or 160 degrees Fahrenheit. On the other hand, if you happen to be a polar explorer on a mission to Antarctica, you may want to reconsider Cardo as your gear of choice. And it's not just about temperature affecting your battery life. How long your battery lasts between charges depending on how much work the device is doing. As we go into the off-season, or even time of long breaks between rides, it's best to give your unit a full charge and a run of update for the latest software before storing it away in your closet. Just make sure you tuck your cardo away in a safe place and a comfortable room temperature. Although it's typical for your battery capacity to decrease gradually, our goal is that you will enjoy the best experience with our products for many years to come. Should you experience any unexpected or rapid battery degradation, please reach out to our customer support. To sum it up, charge your battery smartly. Be mindful of your usage habits and store it right. It's all about preserving that power. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have learned a thing or two about keeping your battery in top-notch condition. Take care and ride safe.